Johannes Abuasa, and uh, he's, um, he's um, ultra structural uh, scientist here at the NEI. He received his undergraduate uh, degree in botany from uh, Cairo, uh, Egypt, and then immigrated to the United States, where he uh, completed a PhD degree in uh, in uh, phylogenetic uh, uh, systematics at the Ohio University. And since then, uh, he left and he has taken, he's been here at the NIH, uh, particularly at NCI, since uh, 1998, and uh, served there and uh, was also uh, in the uh, uh, performing some research at the, at the George Washington University before coming to the NEI in 2011. And all this time, his interest has been in uh, mito the role of mitochondrial dysfunction in uh, diseases, with particular emphasis in uh, disease modeling through phylogenetics. And uh, today he's going to tell us uh, some interesting story about the death of Eucharist itself. Thanks, Dr. Gregory. I'm going to move it. So uh, the uh, talk today is going to be about the, the various ways of cell death that uh, the cells undergo uh, in the uh, eukaryotic cell. Basically, uh, the work we do at the uh, ultrastructural pathology is looking at disease tissues, and from that, you know, you'll be able to, looking by looking at the images, try to construct the way the cells are dying. And... The reason I, I, I'm talking today about the types of cell death is that last year we worked on this paper with my uh, new student, Chris Ardillion, who many of you know. And we came to a point uh, talking about the uh, cell death in AMD. And this is where we had lots of discussions looking at the images of uh, the AMD, uh, uh, you know, uh, from autopsies, from patients, from, from many sources. And we got to the point where we realized that apoptosis is not taking place in AMD, but other types of death. And that, you know, made us wonder what are these types of death that are going on. And the reason, the reason of, uh, the reason many people, every time they look at a, at a pathology or dying cells, etc., they tell you apoptosis, apoptosis, because it is the, the most known mode, and, and, and the literature has been biased towards apoptosis. Everybody you know, that looks at cell death tells you, okay, apoptosis, they do the MTT test, and they tell you, oh, we have this number of cells or percentage dying, and it's all apoptosis. But in reality, especially in pathology, apoptosis is the least uh, of the death types that you see in uh, pathological cases. And so, so what I'm presenting today is a survey how do we see the different types of cell death from the perspective of the electron microscope? All the images that I'm showing you today are mine. Uh, and uh, most of it has been published in collaboration with Dr. Chen uh, and uh, my students, other collaborators. And some has not been published. This, uh, this presentation actually will make a nice review paper uh, Hopefully, we'll put it together and, and also send it out. So why cell death research is important? Because the field is still immature, and there is a lot of discre discrepancies between papers on what are the steps in a uh, cell death type. Even, you know, well-known death uh, type like apoptosis, you look at certain things, and they are not there, especially, you know, by EM. You know, many people describe things based on the molecular, but not uh, based on uh, EM. So many, many of the published work does not include EM. And so it, it remains theoretical because they are not supporting what they are talking about from a molecular point of view with the images that shows that. So, so there's a lot of work to be done on that. From a clinical and diagnostic and therapeutic point of view, you know, knowing the, the, the cause of death, uh, helps us know what are the causes of the pathology. 
Also, it helps us to understand some degenerative diseases like AMD, what is really going on. Because if you say something is dying by necroptosis, is way different than saying it is dying by apoptosis. Also, knowing how things, how cells die, uh, helps us uh, find, you know, prevention and also cure. From the EM point of view, I already told you that, you know, we need to incorporate the EM picture, you know, in conjunction with uh, the, the molecular because many of the published work on cell death is only uh, molecular. Uh, in EM, we see more death types than has been published. And I'm going to show you some of these things uh, that, you know, has not yet been published. Uh, you know, published. Nobody has uh, showed us that. And, you know, this is what I try to do here is connect the EM with the molecular. So you are going to see an attempt to do that. So according to Nick Klein, who is an evolutionary immunologist, actually, the best examples of evolution are sex and death. So how did uh, death of cells evolve. Okay, if we go into the bacteria, all right, the, the, the death system in bacteria is very simple. It is the toxin antitoxin system, which is a very primitive form. But some alpha proteobacteria, they have some metacaspases. And since the mitochondria is actually an alpha proteobacteria, so most likely the caspases have come into the eukaryotic cell from the uh, mitochondria. Uh, in, in bacteria, there is no death. Basically, a bacterium can keep dividing and live forever. But in eukaryotic cells, death is inevitable. It's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you why, you know, that is. So if you, if you go back to the symbiotic theory of uh, eukaryotic evolution, you know, the, the, the eukaryotic cell is basically a system, a symbiotic system between two types of bacteria, okay? And the, before the molecular oxygen appeared on Earth, all the reactions were anaerobic reactions, okay? They did not need oxygen. But when the oxygen appeared, we have now some microorganisms that can use the oxygen as the electron acceptor and therefore can produce energy by using the oxygen. And this is what the mitochondria does. So the, 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 uh, the bacteria is limited by, uh, is, its growth is limited because it produces toxins in the meat. So that prevents them from keep going and also the amount of energy that they produce is limited. But when you have hundreds of mitochondria, basically hundreds of bacteria, you have a lot of energy, so this allowed the eukaryotic cell to have characteristics that the prokaryotes do not have. Basically, a large amount of energy, and also by having your power generator with you, you can go anywhere. So it allowed the eukaryotic cell to move to new niches, and also it allowed multicellularity. So with all of that also came a problem, and that is the vulnerability of and because the eukaryotic cell is vulnerable to death, there are several ways that e the eukaryotic cell can die. All right. The eukaryotic cell spends 50% of its energy on maintenance, basically maintaining the membranes, packing the chromosomes, coiling the DNA. So any dip below the 50% makes the system vulnerable to death. So one of the main vulnerable uh, aspects of the mitochondria is the respiratory chain. Nothing affects the bacteria, or the mitochondria in this case, like you know, damage to that system. This is where actually death happens. I showed this figure before, and basically the eukaryotic cell has 100% differentiation if it has all the energy it needs. But once there is a dip in that, okay, you will get a hypoxic model that basically living at the, the as a diseased cell at the lower end of the energy spectrum and all 
also without differentiation. So basically, pathology is that when differentiation based on a dip below 50% that it used for maintenance, uh, and the cell becomes pathological cell, not functioning as the way it should function. There is only one type of cell that can function and live here. Do you know what it is? Cancerous cells. Cancerous cells are the only ones that can live in this corner of this graph. And of course, that's a pathology. So now we know that the amount of energy also determines the type of death that's going to happen. We know that, for example, apoptosis requires a lot of energy to happen, while necroptosis requires less, while autophagoptosis requires, requires even less energy to happen. This is a summary of the death types that I'm going to be talking about. So there are death types that will require signal to happen. For example, apoptosis always requires a signal, pyroptosis requires a signal, and necroptosis. While this cluster of cell death types, they don't require a signal, death signal to happen. They basically happen when the energy level in the cell goes below 50% and the cell cannot maintain itself, so it happens accidentally. So one of those simplest types of death that could happen to a cell is necrosis. And this is different than necroptosis. Okay, so this is induced by uh, physical chemical stress and it could be coagulative, basically due to denaturation of the proteins of the cell or digestive liquefaction uh, or combination of the two. And it can happen by external causes uh, like uh, uh, virus, uh, toxins, uh, or trauma. Uh, or internal factors like ischemia, hypoxia, starvation, dehydration. And it doesn't require energy to happen. And here's an example. A virus invading the, uh, the kidney cells, basically. Uh, this is the polyoma virus. And it fills up the nucleus. This is the nucleus. And you can see the virus started to fill up the, uh, the nucleus. And then it fills up, basically it replaces the whole contents of the cell, the cell is gone. This is what you see, a ghosty cell filled with the virus. It's actually a very pretty, uh, because the way it packs itself is, is, is really beautiful. So coagulative necrosis, this is uh, the uh, untreated cells. Uh, this is the light microscopy and this is the electron microscope. This is after treatment. And you can see how the, the, the disintegration of the cytoplasm started to happen. And when you look at it by EM, this is the way it looks. So this is the nucleus, basically, and this is the cytoplasm. Again, this is the cytoplasm that looks the nucleus. So this is the kind of necrosis that happens and does not require much of uh, energy. So uh, moving to the ones that require energy, like apoptosis. By electron microscopy, when you, when you look at cells that are undergoing apoptosis, right away you can recognize that. And you recognize that from the condensation that happens. There's a shrinkage and darkness. It looks, the cell looks darker than a healthy cell. So these are, this is the, 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 the most obvious. And of course, this is uh, accompanied by pycnosis, basically the condensation of the chromatin and the fragmentation of the chromosomes. Blebbing of the cell membrane. This is one of the aspects that I don't see. It's in the literature, but with the EM, we don't see that. And the first image that I had at the, at the title slide, there are two cells. One of them is doing the blebbing. Supposedly, this is apoptosis. I took the image from the National Library of Medicine website, but it's really, it's a fictitious, uh, <laughs> fictitious model. It's not really what happens. There is, there is no blebbing that we see in apoptosis. Of course, the organelles start to, uh, the organelles of the cell start to disintegrate, so you have uh, amorphous kind of morphology of the cell where you don't see any of the organelles. So the cell now shrinks 
into a smaller size, dark body, we call it the apoptotic body. So what happens to the apoptotic body? And this is important uh, because if the cell disintegrates and its parts uh, splatter all over you know, in the system, it causes immunological reaction. But when everything is still contained, there is no immunolog immunological reaction. And this is what happens in apoptosis. You have an apoptotic body that uh, the, the macrophages come and take that. I'm going to show you that in, in a mouse of, a, uh, of an eye of a mouse. And nothing remains. Basically, the whole thing is, disappears. So again, you know, uh, the apoptosis requires a lot of energy to happen because it's all digestion that is taking place and does not elicit immunological reaction. So this is our, these are some of the biochemical things that happen, which is the cleavage of the proteins and uh, the collapse of the cytoskeleton and the nuclear matrix, uh, the DNA fragmentation, uh, and also the transfer of the phosphatidylserine to the outside, and this is the signal for the macrophages to uh, uh, engulf the apoptotic body. And, of course, the famous release of the cytochrome C from the mitochondria. So this is the developing eye of a mouse. And, of course, in development, you have apoptosis. And these are two apoptotic cells within the eye of the, of the mouse. And you can see the, the shrinkage of the uh, nucleus if you compare it to the cells, the other cells uh, in the uh, uh, section here. And this is an apop apoptotic body. So those cells transform basically into this condensed, uh, dark, uh, apoptotic body that you see here. And this is a vessel, and this is a macrophage, and these, this is an apoptotic body that was basically taken in by the macrophage and, the, and took it into the bloodstream where it will be digested. So as you can see, nothing is left of the apoptotic cell. How many microns is the apoptotic body? Uh, it's, it's like one micron, usually. Between one to two microns. It's, it's, it's really small. Usually you don't see it because, uh, I mean, we are lucky we, we got these pictures. But usually, very rarely, unless you have like a tissue culture where you have like 5% apoptosing, uh, it happens fast, you know, uh, and you don't see it. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a complete implosion, complete digestion of the of the cell. So this is another also uh, uh, condensed uh, cell that is going undergoing apoptosis, and you can see here the transformation of the nucleus into this dense. Uh, Basically, it's like a like lysosome. It becomes a lysosome. If this was by itself, you'll think it's a lysosome. And these are the mitochondria, uh, and you can see how the mitochondria here, you know, is losing its uh, uh, morphology completely, and its membranes are getting digested. There is a variation also. It's not nothing happens, you know, like like a textbook kind of a thing. You know, there is there is the the, the, the beautiful form that I showed you before, but then. There are, there are different forms where, where you have uh, the nucleus, uh, you know, uh, condensing, but at the same time there is chromoso uh, chromosomal or nuclear, uh, sorry, chromatin leakage that is happening, and you can see that here. This is the mitochondria, this is this mitochondria also uh, undergoing disintegration, and there's a pore, you can see the pore here probably releasing in cytochrome C, right, and, and other contents probably as well. The chromatin, this and this, and, and this is a, this is a higher mag basically of this, and here it is. Yep. Okay. This is another cell undergoing apoptosis, but here what you see is the li lipid droplets, and we're going to talk later about the significance of seeing lipid droplets within 
the apoptotic or other cell types. This is in the, in the bone marrow, the megakaryocyte. Uh, it produces the plates, and it's a polyploid. And you can see only one of its nuclei is undergoing apoptosis, as you can see here. So there are, there are variations on how the apoptosis could happen within the eukaryotic cell. I'm not going to go through all of that, but, you know, we, we keep discovering in your, you know, ways that apoptosis could happen. And uh, if, you, if you have been in the field for a while, you remember the, the extrinsic way of uh, the, the, the death of the, the uh, initiation of apoptosis, which is basically the caspase uh, ligand, you know, attaching to the uh, uh, caspase receptor and then initiating the, ca the uh, caspase release, etc. And now, we, we have the new uh, death type, which is a few years old, basically the perforin-dependent uh, granzyme uh, uh, induction or, or presentation, uh, and it happens by the cytotoxic uh, um, uh, lymphocytes. Necroptosis. So necroptosis differs from apoptosis. It, some people call it the aborted apoptosis. And in some literature, it tells you that the cell starts apoptose, but then it runs out of ATP, and it goes into necroptosis. So the, the, the early signs is the plasma membrane permeabilization. So there is, there is no condensation here, all right? Here we have basically the busting of the... the, the, the we have uh, an enlargement of the cell, and then the cell membrane busts. So this is more dramatic kind of death and this one elicits immunological reaction. So also, there is a digestion going on of the cytoplasm, but this one is not causing the cell to implode, so probably the cytoskeleton is not being destroyed the way it is in the apoptotic uh, cell death. The mitochondria is swollen and degenerate, and then uh, heterogeneous disintegration of the chromatin. So here the, the, the nucleus is going to look uh, uh, not uniform the way in apoptosis, but it's going to have different areas of digestion. So you are going to have dark areas and light areas. And then the cell ruptures uh, and, and the contents are released. Okay. So because, because it's a downhill process, it happens fast and, and does not require energy input as much as apoptosis. Initially it does, but the later it doesn't. Uh, and also, there is no mention in the literature of lipid droplets, uh, and it is a source of localized inflammation. Okay, so here's the EM uh, picture. So all of these cells are undergoing uh, necroptosis. And you can see how the nucleus, okay, you have heterogeneous disintegration. You have the dark and the lighter area, and almost in all of them. But this is the initial step. Then, you know, you end up with something like this, the disintegration, complete disintegration of the nucleus, and you can see the translucent uh, uh, cytoplasm and the disintegration of the uh, organelles. And notice here, there are lipid droplets, okay? And here too, and here too. And this is uh, something you, 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 we, we are gonna revisit because it has uh, implications. Uh, and here too, you can see that. So all of them, all of these cells that are, huh? Okay. How does the cell die? Like the the uh, necroptosis. This one, this one actually, it wasn't induced. This is uh, from a patient. Basically, when the cell cannot undergo apoptosis, it will do necroptosis. Yeah. The ATP, the 
amount of ATP that, that exists there. Because the digestive process requires ATP. So here's the question. What is the significance of the lipid droplets in the cytoplasm of a dying cell? Does anybody know? No? Okay. All right. So if you, if you, if you remember the uh, Krebs cycle, the tricarboxylic acid cycle, okay, when there is a lot of acetyl-CoA and it cannot go into the Krebs cycle because the Krebs cycle is dysfunctional, the acetyl-CoA would come out of the mitochondria, goes into the cytoplasm, and goes into the, the lipid synthesis. So you end up with these lipid droplets in the cytoplasm. So, so basically, it's indicative, it's indicative of dysfunctional mitochondria. And this is why when we, when we see that in the uh, necroptotic cells, then it tells us that the dysfunction of the mitochondria has preceded the necroptosis. <coughs> this is a variation where basically the cytoplasm uh, disintegrated before the, the nucleus did. And you can see this, this looks like almost like a healthy nucleus, except for the fact that it is very spherical. Uh, so it's, it's it enlarged, but uh, the cytoplasm is gone. So by the time the, the nucleus started to disintegrate, and you can see that in the euchromatin, it, it, it's getting digested. The, the, the whole cytoplasm disintegrated, and the cell busted, and the, all the contents are in the stroma. Yes? The disintegration starts in the euchromatin, and the condensation starts in the heterochromatin. Okay. In, when when, the, when the, the digestion starts to happen, it happens first in the euchromatin. And you can see that here. All of this euchromatin started to get digested. If you compare it with this one, you see the difference. This is becoming more translucent. And, and this is also undergoing digestion, but like in apoptosis, the, the heterochromatin uh, condenses first. That becomes pycnotic, basically. But you know, any healthy cell, you have a balance between the euka eukaryotic, eukaryotic, sorry, euchromatin and the, the heterochromatin. So, wouldn't that get to, to which one? I guess that's what you get into it. Because I'm looking at it in terms of the signal uh -huh. for apoptosis and necrotosis. Mm -hmm. Is it the same signal? It's just that the necrotosis is just a default, you don't have ATP. You see? It's the same signal. To me, it seems the same signal, honestly. Uh, but when you go into the literature, like, like this review paper, you know, they tell us that there are more, and probably, probably this is what I said earlier, that cell death is immature field, and, and there's a lot of gaps that still nobody has filled. And, and, and like in here, you can see that there is, there is nothing in, the, in those receptors that are related to apoptosis. What this review is telling us that, oh, necroptosis is way totally different than, than apoptosis. Uh, but I don't think that this is the determining factor. I, what, what we have, I think, that is problematic is the, uh, the, 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 the sequence of events. Nobody tells us what comes first. Okay, it's all hypothetical. And, and this is why, like, when does this happen? Earlier or later? Is it an early event or a later event? And, and this problem is, is again, uh, you, you, you see it uh, in, in, in the cancer field, where people tell you, you know, this mutation is there, that mutation is there, but nobody can tell you, is it, is it an early 
other event that caused the cancer or a lifestyle event that happened because of the chromosomal rearrangement and mutations that are taking place. So we are suffering the same situation here in, in the, in the uh, cell death field where people give you events, but we don't know exactly the sequence of events. So yeah. this is, this, I, I, I would say that treat all of this as a hypothesis. Don't treat this as a, a, a fact. When you are working, when you are working with your experiments, you have really to to go with what your data is showing. Uh, sometimes, yeah, it's against uh, some of the reviews. So what? Well, the problem I'm having with the false uh, pathway is that uh, the AMP kinase is extremely sensitive in sensing ATP level. Yes. Why would the cell make a decision mm -hmm. based on a faulty? You know, if you're going to go through a process, you already receive the signal. Well, because the cell cannot maintain itself. If, if the cell does not have enough ATP, the cell has to abort. Because, abort, uh, sorry, because autophagy will stop. Okay, and once autophagy starts, it could continue. Okay, without having to need energy. You know, auto, auto, autophagy is actually a default mechanism. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, it's this is a long presentation, so I want to. <laughs> Move on with that. So, so basically, uh, these are the receptors that trigger the uh, necroptosis. And as you can see here, this is where you know they talk about how the ATP depletion is the 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 the, the cause of necroptosis. So, so this this mechanism is tied basically the the cause to ATP depletion. More necroptosis. You can see. You know, this is your classic kind of necroptosis taking place. Okay, so uh, I put this slide to, uh, you know, show you that also the decision to apoptose or necroptose depending on the age. Like some of the young pyoclasts will, will do apoptosis, but the older ones could not, and they undergo uh, necroptosis. Uh, but I don't want to... Uh, spend more time on this issue, you know. Um, so, one of the questions is that why the suppression of autophagy in apoptosis resistant cells lead to necroptosis? Okay, if you suppress autophagy, you'll end up actually with necroptosis because autophagy is a way of killing the cell, the way the cell kills itself. When you suppress it, the only pathway you leave for death is necroptosis. So they are resistant to apoptosis, and you block necroptosis. So what is left? OK. Sorry, uh, and you block autophagy. So the only thing that is left is necroptosis. So pyroptosis. So here in pyroptosis, it resembles the early, in early stages, the apoptosis. So you have a nuclear uh, pycnosis, which is basically the condensation of the uh, uh, chromatin material. DNA fragmentation, membrane vesicle formation. So in this case here, they are showing that. And then you have the pore formation, where there is leakage uh, of material to the outside. And there is potassium imbalance. And then the cell swelling and rupture. So here again, we have a rupture of the cell, and the contents are released you know, uh, in, the, in the stroma. So here also there is, there is not much emphasis on what the mitochondria is doing. Uh, lipid droplets or glycogen accumulation. Also we're going to talk about what is the significance of glycogen accumulation when that happens in the cell. Also, there is no mention of autophagy or cytoskeleton. Uh, here it shows, the, the, in this sketch, the, the, the similar parts to apoptosis and the different uh, parts. And here, as I, as I said earlier, you know, don't pay attention to the blebbing that happens in apoptosis. But the difference, as I said, uh, 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 the, the membrane swelling, so instead of shrinking, you have the, the expansion of the cell, there is the vesicle formation, okay, and the poration of the uh, membrane. This is an image we published late last year, and uh, this
this is in vitro application of IL-1 beta and IL-18 to uh, mouse retinal stem cells. And what we noticed is that it, it damages the, uh, the mitochondria and in, induces uh, autophagosomes. And you can see that both actually produce similar results. So you have autophagosomes and the, the both also induce mitochondrial damage. So when you look at the mitochondria, the mitochondria are gone. And also, again, the lipid droplets. So you have mitochondrial damage and you get lipid droplets right away, okay? So the advanced stage is the total disintegration, basically the rupture. You see, you don't see the membrane at all. The membrane is gone exactly the way the pyroptosis is described. However, IL-17, although it produced pyroptosis, but it wasn't exactly the same. The nucleus maintained almost, you know, uh, itself to the end. But the similarity is in that it destroyed the mitochondria and produced the, the uh, lipid droplets, okay, total cytoplasmic disintegration, and lots of glycogen accumulated, and you can see those black droplets. These are the, uh, the glycogen and the mitochondria are damaged. Although there is one that is not damaged yet, but in general, by the end, you end up with total damage. So the other thing that, the other way the, 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 uh, the cell can die, and, and we saw that in the mouse models of uh, Dr. Chen, and we published actually this one last year with my student, uh, Alex Ogilvy. We notice that in the AMD patients, we get those chromatin vesicles in the cytoplasm. So when you look at the retinal cells, you, you see that there are chromatin spheroids coming out of the nucleus, okay, and hanging out in the cytoplasm, okay, and this is a cluster of them that they cluster together. Actually, we have better images, I forgot to put for you, where, where it shows those vesicles coming out of the nucleus. From virus, the, 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 uh, the virus has different morphology. I mean, this is, this is not a virus. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you, can, you can see, actually, yeah. I, I, the polyoma, no, no, the polyoma is, is, is a different shape. No, all viruses form the same shape, right? No, 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 they are not all the same shape. You can, you can, like, like polyoma is different from the herpes virus. It's different from the HIV. No. Remember, this is the retina. There are no viruses. There, is no virus? there are no viruses supposed to be there. Which virus? Yeah, but but this patient, you know, this one was not a viral infection. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I, I'm sure the viruses can go everywhere, even in the brain, but, but this one is not a virus. And, and we, I can show you in other pictures, I did not put them actually, unfortunately, where the, those vesicles are coming out of the nucleus. So these are definitely nuclear chromatin spheroids that are coming out of the chromatin. So you have chromatin disintegration. I, you see that also in patients who are under, uh, uh, gone uh, ke uh, chemo or radiation. This, the damage that happens in, in, the, in the nucleus uh, fragments the chromatin and the chromatin would leak out exactly like that. So we have seen this in other situations. So, but, but this one in, is an, in, in uh, AMD patient. And we've seen it in more than one patient. So we know that this takes place. And this is in the mouse. This is the, the image that we published and showing that in the uh, mutated mice, the knockout mice, that you see the uh, chromatin leakage, you know, up. Actually, when you, when you look at these under the microscope, you know, it's, it's a better image than this. This is a reproduced image. But with, we did immunolabeling, and we showed that this has histone 
all, all in it. So, so we are sure of that. Uh, well, let's leave that for later because it needs some thinking. Uh, but anyway, so so the 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 chromatin chromatin leakage triggers immunological reaction because the the extra uh, nuclear DNA is detected through the C gas, and the the C gas activates an inflammatory response uh, uh, f uh, through INF beta uh, and through the C gas and the C G G A M P pathway so it's known to elicit any any DNA yes. it's a it's a receptor in the cytoplasm that that uh, that will detect basically there are detect it's not the only detector okay there are there are detectors of DNA leakage DNA leakage in a cell is a catastrophic event and also there are detectors for mitochondrial DNA leakage so these events are catastrophic, and when the cell starts seeing, you know, in, in its cytoplasm DNA, it elicits uh, immunological reaction to get rid of the cell. <coughs> so the other type that is now of cell death that is now entering the literature is autophagoptosis. Basically, it is when the cell keeps producing autophagosomes, depleting in this way its uh, uh, mitochondria and membranes, and it dies doing that. It happens, and I've seen it in clinical cases where uh, the patient had septicemia, and, and you can see that the tubules of the kidney just keep packaging the toxins and, and producing autophagosomes till the cells really basically die. So in case you haven't seen an autophagosome, this is the way they look, okay? And usually it starts as single vesicle and, and then, you know, it includes, its, it becomes a sink for other vesicles and becomes either a digestive sink or the cells basically pushes it out into the bloodstream and you can see that in the bloodstream. Again, here is an advanced state where you can see that the cell is filled with autophagosomes and the, the nucleus basically is dying. And you can see the mitochondria are disintegrated. There are mitochondria here within this autophagosome. There's a lipid droplet. And this is, this is another mitochondria that is disintegrating. The nucleus is also disintegrating. So this is an advanced stage of death by autophagy. You are going to see in the literature confusing statements like this one, okay, telling us that the, the uh, autophagy starts by membranes engulfing the, the, the organelles, but this is not really the way it happens, okay? One of the ideas I had, and I got a couple of postdocs to work on it from Dr. Uh, uh, Robert Clark at Georgetown, is looking at the mitochondria production of autophagosomes because this is the main source of autophagosomes that we see in the electron microscope all right and sure enough I, I gave them some of the images and they did some of the molecular work and these images show you this is the mitochondria and this is an autophagosome produced this is another mitochondria and you can see I initially called them vesicles okay and here we call them autophagosome vesicles. And you can see the mitochondria is producing this autophagosome vesicle. Here again. Uh, and sometimes what happens, the mitochondria will start making the autophagosome, and then it will divide. So you'll end up with, like in this case, you'll end up with actually a mitochondria here, this autophagosome, and another mitochondria here. And actually you can see another autophagosome here. So we published this, and somebody wrote and said, what you guys are seeing are not autophagosomes, they are mitochondrial spheroids, okay? 
So we did more experiments <laughs> to answer, you know, this, this, uh, these two people from Europe. And, and we showed them that actually the, the, our vesicles, our spheroids, are following the classical formation of orthophagosomes and basically the upregulation of ATG5 and LC3 and their localization to the surface of the mitochondria and the formation of the autophagosome. So we are, hopefully we are done with that. So, so the, the, the punchline is that the mitochondria is the main source of autophagosomes. And there are two types of autophagy. You have the starvation-induced, and you have the chemically-induced ones. And they look different. Uh, the, 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 the chemical ones are, are larger, usually, uh, spheroids. Here, you have a cleaner system where the whole mitochondria itself becomes an autophagosome, while here you get that image that I just showed you that we published in our paper. Yeah, one Yeah, it's a good thing up to a point. Usually, for example, cell that is taking chemical things, let's say, uh, you know, uh, cancer treatment, uh, the cell will package that drug into an autophagosome and send it out, get rid of it, all right? But then if you keep giving that cell the chemical, it will keep producing autophagosomes till it runs out of membranes and energy, etc. And that's the way autophag autoph autophagoptosis kills the cell. So it's because it's uncontrolled primitive reaction to chemicals. It's not that the cell, this is the way that it's, it's think of it as a bacteria, okay, that is taking chemical in and trying to get rid of it. And this is what autophagy, so up to a point, autophagy is very beneficial, but if it continues, it kills the cell. This is a this is a, 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 a cell uh, disintegration that we found when we did some treatment in collaboration with, with some people at Georgetown. And basically what you see is that the whole cell just undergoes, everything in the cell undergoes disintegration. The nucleus at the same time, and there is no rupture. It's just the cell dies in its, in its place, okay? And and it's a gradual process, so it's not like a necrosis where it happens at once and at the same time. Uh, this is a gradual process where the treatment killed the cells in a uniform way. There are also, uh, sometimes you see uh, the, the, the mitochondria, like in this case here, where they undergo a swelling, okay? Basically, if you give a treatment, that uh, backs up one of the uh, TCA uh, acids, like succinic acid or fumaric acid, what you end up with, you end up actually with mitochondria like this. And it swells, it's fil it, filled up, it fills up with the uh, acid, and then the, cell, the whole cell undergoes disintegration. And you can see the effect on the nucleus. The nucleus just disintegrated Based on that. So this is one of the ways uh, you can kill a cell by targeting the TCA and uh, one of the enzymes of the TCA and, and stopping the TCA. This way you, you, you basically make the, every mitochondria as a sink that fills up and finally, you know, it kills the cell. This is a close-up and it shows you how the chromatin, in this case the hyperchromatin, is disintegrating without shrinkage. Almost there, guys. So, uh, here are some remarks about that, uh, about what I just, you know, uh, gone through. The, 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 the role of the cytoskeleton is not well defined in the literature. And we don't know exactly when the cytoskeleton starts disintegrating in all of these death types. Uh, also, missing in the literature is the role of the lipid droplets and glycogen. Glycogen starts accumulating when the cell is under hypoxic condition, when the mitochondria 
uh, are not uh, functioning. So we saw that in the in the uh, in the pyroptosis, for example, but nobody talks about it. So also again, the the role of mitochondria, how mitochondria contributes to each one of those deaths. Also, you don't see that in the literature, like in in autophagoptosis, the mitochondria, you know, people still are not sure whether the mitochondria is uh, contributing to the autophagosomes or not. So there is a lot in, in uh, the cell biology that is still undiscovered and waiting, you know, for people to discover it. So if you work on uh, cell biology, remember to include electron microscopy in your work. <laughs> so the, the, there is also this junction between the molecular and the EM, and I cannot uh, overemphasize that. Uh, death, like most pathologies, is energy-centric. And so that without the mitochondrial dysfunction, probably there won't be a death. Cell is able to recover from most events uh, if it has the energy. Without having enough energy, the cell will not survive. The other thing is that you cannot base most of the research on tissue culture because the, the, cell, the eukaryotic cell in tissue culture behaves like uh, a prokaryote. And uh, they are in a hypoxic condition. So extending the knowledge we gather from the tissue culture to the real life situation, especially in pathology, sometimes may not be the most accurate. Well, thank you very much. No questions? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned uh, temporally that necropsis is faster than necropsis. And I was just curious, like, how much faster and what time model, like, on what scale are we talking about? Um, you know, they, they talk about, like, apoptosis takes a few hours. Uh, and, and necroptosis probably takes much less than that. Uh, it's a rapid deterioration. Uh, but based on what, what we have seen by EM, the formation, every time you see the formation of lipids and accumulation of glycogen, then the process is, is longer, is, is, is hours, because building that much lipid and that much glycogen uh, takes longer time. So I, I'm not aware of anybody who did uh, like timing of this, but from what I have seen, I think you cannot gener generalize and say, you know, in this situation, it's going to happen this fast, and in other, you know, it's going to happen the same way. I think it varies depending on nutrients and, and, and uh, oxygen availability and uh, many factors. Uh, Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still, still, it's few hours. Uh, I mean, things happen fast, but not very fast in biological systems. So it takes a while, uh, and 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 also probably there is more coordination, like in the eye of the mouse that I showed at the beginning, because you have to wait for the cleanup, you have to wait for the macrophages to come and take things. Otherwise, you will have apoptotic bodies all over the place. So it's it's a coordinated process, uh, you have to have vessels that, 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 you know, where the apoptotic body is going to be moved to. Uh, so probably it's not as simple process as we think. I think, I mean, looking at the uh, mouse eye, I think that it's, it's a way more sophisticated process. If there is, I mean, if, if they... Yeah. You know, red blood cells do not have mitochondria, and they still die. Uh, so How it's a... They, like, yeah, like red blood cells, they, they get eaten by other cells, you know, macrophages and, and white blood cells. They get recycled. Uh, 
but for for lens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the the, the lens. Wait, wait a second. The lens cell. You have fibroblasts in the lens, and most of the lens is actually collagen. No, it's fibrosome. Yeah, just fibrosome. Yeah, that's epithelium. Like what are the epithelial cells that's in the anterior? Yeah. In the middle, it's just fiber cells. Yeah. The, 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 the fibroblasts, they have, they have mitochondria. Actually, they have a lot of mitochondria. No, no, no. Fibro cells. Fibro cells. In those fiber cells, they don't have, uh, they have a technotic nuclei. Uh, Okay, I have to dig out the uh, EM pictures of that, and, and we go over it together. But uh, I don't know how they die. But they don't die. <laughs> they That's the problem. They don't die. They yeah. don't die. Yeah, I'm not, I, I haven't done any work on that. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you.